The UK has been engulfed in flames this past week, and it's not because of a heat wave. Riots sparked by far-right groups have spread across England, Wales and Northern Ireland. We need to leave by the end. Disperse immediately. Are you a racist, sir? No. That's what people say. People accuse the... No. No. In this video, we'll delve into the roots of this unrest, the misinformation fueling the flames, and its impact on communities across the nation. You know, the, there's children being killed this week, stabbed to death. Why on earth? We just... We don't deserve this as a community. Why are they doing this to us? It was almost a desperation. There was a desire for whoever did this to be a Muslim. Picking on a kid, mate. Fucking hell. Picking on a fucking kid, was it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Don't you fucking dare back to at me, because I will slay you now where you fucking stand, you fucking packy cunts. Right? You listening to fucking me? That fucking kid's dad died for this fucking country. What have you fucking done for it? Fuck all, but take fucking jobs off decent people. That's why one of my top priorities as Prime Minister is to stop the boats. And I have a clear plan to get it done. What kind of powder keg are we building here through incompetent leadership in the UK? I'm a mixed race Muslim and I'm pointing out this very obvious truth. The sheer brass neck, frankly, Andrew, of you lecturing me about the truth when you've spent the last week spewing complete fake news bullshit. This is the problem, isn't it? One of the reasons the Southport riots were as bad as they were is we weren't told the truth. You told your millions of followers, and it was seen by 15 million people, that it was an illegal migrant who had committed these crimes. Are you prepared to apologize for that lie? These were the scenes in Sunderland on Friday, as a mob of anti-immigrant protesters clashed violently with officers outside a mosque. God, this is worse than I thought because I could, I couldn't, I couldn't see that the whole building was shaking. Actually, stay tuned for a deep dive into this critical issue, and join the conversation in the comments below. I see fascists on our street, that's why I'm here tonight. Then people who turned up the other night, it was so disrespectful. Merseyside police said 53 officers were injured in the violent disorder, eight seriously with broken bones, cuts and concussion. One of my colleagues screaming down the phone at me, you need to get out here now. And when I went out, he's holding us like a six-year-old girl in his arms, covered in blood, trying to save her. She's not deserved. She's not deserved to be killed like that. She's just a lovely girl. The spark that ignited this powder keg was a horrific incident in the seaside town of Southport. The scale of the emergency response tells us something about the awfulness of what happened here this morning. So too does where it happened, at a Taylor Swift themed yoga class in the school summer holidays. And then there are the words of those who were here, who saw children with stab wounds, some running, some needing to be carried out onto this street. One of my business colleagues is phoning me. You need to get out here now. And I went out and he literally was carrying a young girl covered in blood. He's covered in blood, trying to look after her, keep her alive. And then some of the neighbours were bringing others out. I don't know how many girls were left in that building. He was still in there. And I thought, just gonna kill them all. So much to leave, so much to do for the wall, and someone is just come and take your life. How do you feel about the person who allegedly did this? Angry. Yeah. Angry. It's the same room that my son played for hours in. People want more answers, people want to know what's going on. People aren't happy. 
there won't ever be an end because yesterday will always be in the memory of this community. Something you never want your town to be famous for, is it? But uh, it's, it's going to be a day that is going to be in our memory now for a very, very long time. On July 29th, 2024, three young girls aged six, seven and nine were fatally stabbed at a Taylor Swift themed dance and yoga event. Eight more children and two adults were injured in the attack. Police quickly arrested a 17-year-old suspect from a nearby village. He arrived at court protected by a heavy police escort and the cloak of anonymity. But after two days of violence fueled by misinformation, the judge said people should know who he is. It was the middle of the night, three days after the stabbing, when police called a press conference at short notice. The Crown Prosecution Service has authorised Merseyside Police to charge a 17-year-old boy of Banks, Lancashire, with three counts of murder and 10 counts of attempted murder. That boy couldn't be named because of his age until a few hours later, a shock decision from the courts. In the last few minutes, the judge in court in Liverpool has decided to name the 17-year-old. He is Axel Ruder Cabana. The decision to name a 17-year-old is unusual, but Axel Ruder Cabana turns 18 next week. And the judge said there was a clear public interest in naming him now to remove some of the mystique around his identity online. In the aftermath of this tragedy, misinformation spread rapidly online. False claims circulated that the suspect was an asylum seeker who had recently arrived in the UK by boat. Unfounded rumours also suggested he was Muslim. In reality, the suspect was born in Wales to Rwandan parents. Despite police urging the public not to spread unconfirmed speculation, the damage was already done. The following evening, violence broke out near a local mosque in Southport. Just hours after stopping the knife, Merseyside police faced another assault. This crowd weren't welcomed by locals. We don't know where they streamed in from, but they're believed to be supporters of the English Defence League. Just before eight o'clock, they met outside a mosque in the town, where a few hundred people threw bricks and fireworks at the windows. There are police dogs arriving now here in the centre of Southport, just up to the junction here where uh, we've seen protesters, a crowd here throwing objects at a mosque that is just on the corner of this junction here. They've been clashing now violently with police, throwing objects at the police, clashing with officers in riot gear. And this really is a very tense situation and an already horrendous time for Southport. At one moment, even armed police were pushed back. Before we decided, it wasn't safe for us either. A police van was set on fire and 27 officers were hospitalised. The community there are absolutely reeling from the horrific incident that took place two days ago and to have that space that they need to process the trauma, to grieve, uh, overshadowed by this violence and disorder, I think is completely unacceptable. Suzanne's shop was broken into and looted. She can't believe what's happening to her community. <sighs> despair, really despair of why this is happening to us. Why do, our community's already suffered this week. This unrest quickly spread to other parts of the country. Riots have since occurred in cities across England, from Plymouth in the south to Sunderland in the northeast, as well as in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Crowds have attacked mosques, accommodation housing asylum seekers and other buildings. Cars have been set ablaze, shops looted and dozens of police officers injured. The violence has been fueled by far-right groups and anti-immigration sentiment. An asylum hotel in Tamworth was set alight by a far-right mob. Trapped inside, asylum seekers filmed from the top floors. As outside, racist graffiti was left on the walls. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. 
It's really scary seeing the people um, rioting, looting the shops. People are really scared to come out. There are a lot of ethnic minority people uh, whom I sp spoke to and they're really scared to come out. Not just Muslim? Not just Muslim, not just Muslim. Um, I'm from India. Uh, to be honest, I, 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 I can't come out and uh, tell to the protesters or the people who are running towards me, hundreds of crowds, that, oh, no, I'm not a Muslim, I'm from India, please don't spare me. That's not possible. So everyone is scared about it. Social media influencers, including known far-right figures, have amplified false claims and called for nationwide protests. There was almost a desperation. There was a desire for whoever did this to be a Muslim. And when it was revealed, in fact, he was a British Christian kid, there was a rapid attempt to reorientate it about this kid being black. Apparently he's from a Rwandan background. But they forget that a man of colour went in to try and save those girls, one of whom also was from a migrant background, as I understand it. And then two days later, in the same country, down the road, still in North England, you have black people and Muslims being lynched, actually lynched, like it's the American South. We're definitely seeing something like it was in the 1970s when the National Front were on the street and Asians, black people, being beaten up on the street. There's definitely an echo of that. Get me 100 fags, two bottles of wine, a bottle of whiskey and 10 cans of lager now. You know what you're going to have? Nothing. What? You know you're not supposed to be in there. Go out, bang. Just fucking get them, you packy bastard. What did you say? Get them, you filthy packy bastard. Right, now. Get off! Get off! Get off! Go on, I'll make you a problem. If you're calling me a packy bastard, just open the door like him out. Get your fucking hands off him now! Fucking hands off him! Picking on a kid, mate. Fucking hell. Picking on a fucking kid, was ya? Eh? Take what you want to go, OK? Shut up! I'm talking. I'm your fucking size. Fuck with me. Go we want just go now, all right? Don't you fucking dare back to at me, because I will slay you now where you fucking stand, you fucking packy cunts. Right? You listening to fucking me? That fucking kid's dad died for this fucking country. What have you fucking done for it? Fuck all, but take fucking jobs off decent people. Now listen, son. Listen, good. We'll be back here whenever we want, right? Because this is fucking ours now. This is ours, this fucking Sandy. Don't forget that. Any fucking time we... I'm cleaning the place up. It fucking stinks, Cody. Fucking stinks. Freaks of the fucking shit. What are you doing, boys? Get in the fucking car, will you? Get in the... We will not accept such behaviour. It's unacceptable. Whitechapel in East London. A hardline vigilante group is trying to impose Sharia law on unsuspecting members of the public. Muslim area, OK? Alcohol, bad. This is a Muslim area. It's not just drinkers being targeted. Yeah, you're, 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 you're gay, mate. Get out of here, mate. Get out of here, you fag. And women wearing skirts above the knee are also being harassed. To not dress like that in Muslim area. These men claim they're simply tackling drunken behaviour where alcohol's already banned from the streets. The vast majority of Muslim people living in this part of East London want nothing to do with vigilantes whatsoever. At the local mosque, Muslim leaders are appalled and have condemned the patrols which they say are stirring up hatred. It has done a, a huge amount of damage to the Muslim community and it's uh, no doubt going to um, increase uh, Islamophobia. The anti-Islamic violence prompted hundreds of mosques to step up security amid fears of more demonstrators, like in the city of Liverpool, where residents banded together to protect their local mosque. Yeah, we're here today just showing solidarity with the Muslim community. You know, we, we feel terrified at the moment. You know, the threats that are being made and, you know, I think it's not what this city is about. There'd been rumours of a far-right protest in Birmingham, so dozens of Asian men decided to get here first. Many were wearing balaclavas or face masks, one man armed with what appeared to be a bat. This had been organised by men who've had enough of the violence towards Muslims. This is now another group that's just been set up. Earlier, this community activist showed me a WhatsApp group with over a 1,000 members wanting to stand up to racist mobs. Hopefully, the police will take care of us. But if they don't, we would obviously be willing to take care of ourselves. 
the message that we are sending out as a community is that don't take the law into your own hands. As protesters gathered and we attempted to report live, it became clear the media weren't welcome. A sense of anger, I think you can hear there. We decided to leave, but as we drove away, this man, armed with a knife, attempted to slash a tyre on one of our vans. He's going to slash the tyres. He's going to do the same to us. Less than a week after three small girls were killed in a Taylor Swift themed dance class in Southport near Liverpool in northwest England, far right protests, anti immigrant, anti Muslim protests have continued to take place in cities across the UK. On Saturday, they took place in cities such as Bristol in the west of England, Hull in the northeast, Belfast in Northern Ireland, Liverpool, Manchester as well. There were scenes of violent clashes between far-right protesters and police, a number of whose officers were injured when they had things like bricks and bottles thrown at them. There were also violent scenes when uh, anti-racist protesters and far-right protesters managed to get to one another. For the most part, they were kept apart by police officers. We also saw vehicles being set on fire. There were also uh, reports of looting in some instances as well. We saw some very strange things during the riots. I mean, first of all, they seem to have burned down a citizen's advice bureau. If you're Poor. I remember when I was growing up pretty poor, we were always down the CAB. It's very useful for working class people. So burning it down is probably not in the interest of poorer communities. They raided a Greg's, a Greg, a blow against the working class and a lush. So I hope you're enjoying your pomegranate and peppermint body scrub over your swastika tattoo to keep it all smooth. And someone stole some Crocs from a shoe zone, not even proper Crocs, shoe zone Crocs. So I don't even know what the thinking was there. Turns out that by taking their country back, what they actually meant was taking mobile phones from O2. However, the situation is complex. While some participants are intent on violence, others initially joined out of concerns about immigration or general frustration with societal issues. The UK government and police have responded forcefully to the unrest. I utterly condemn the far-right thuggery we've seen this weekend. Be in no doubt, those that have participated in this violence will face the full force of the law. The government believes their constant public messages about swift and robust justice will act as a deterrent, including this Home Office video. <laughs> Hundreds of arrests have been made, including children as young as 11. Authorities have promised swift justice, with prosecutors considering terrorism charges for some suspects. A specialised police unit has been deployed to tackle the disorder, and the government is working with social media companies to remove misinformation. There's been a false identity of the suspect circulating online. I've seen that identity and I can confirm it is absolutely wrong. Unfortunately, it's been shared millions of times and police are quite concerned now about this, the way this kind of information spreads very quickly. A loose, decentralised network of far-right activists are the producers, consumers and sharers of the digital memes and misinformation that have fuelled local anger. They use messaging apps to coordinate protests. Seen as something of a figurehead is Tommy Robinson, real name Stephen Yaxley Lennon. He set up the now disbanded English Defence League and is currently out of the country with a warrant issued for his arrest. But for years, anti-immigration sentiment has been amplified by the UK's right-wing newspapers and was used as a wedge issue by the former Conservative government. You go for 10 or 15 years having a largely uncontested um, um, right-wing and extreme right-wing kind of newspaper media telling their readers that the country is you know, in desperate straits uh, and a lot of politicians on the right seeking advantage in that position. Uh, now that is the whole kind of cocktail against this which is taking place. We have a growing number of young people in this country who do not subscribe to British values, in fact, loathe much of what we stand for. Are we talking about Muslims here? We are. This is the Hope Hostel in Kigali, and if that flight goes ahead, this is where asylum seekers will be housed. It's a hundred 100 capacity, 50 twin bedrooms, and it's been set up so that the people feel as comfortable as possible here, quite clearly. There's a bedroom which we can take a look at, one of those double bedrooms which two people can stay in. There's wardrobes as well. 
that, that there's obviously amenities on the table too. Again, it's all geared towards trying to make it feel as homely as possible. You can see those slippers there in the little compartment at the bottom as well. It's an attempt at making this place, well, look as, look as, as normal as can be when they land in. You are all welcome here in Derby. And it is important that your voices and your stories can be heard by the Home Office in London. One of the slogans that the far-right rallies have adopted is Stop the Boats. It didn't come from some backwater estate. It came from Rishi Sunak, until recently the Prime Minister of this country. Stopping the boats requires international collaboration and I'm making sure the UK leads the way. Illegal migration is simply unfair. It's unfair on the British people who have opened their homes to genuine refugees and it's unfair on taxpayers who are having to spend nearly £6 million a day to put up illegal migrants in hotels. That's why one of my top priorities as Prime Minister is to stop the boats, and I have a clear plan to get it done. In April, the UK government announced a new immigration policy. Those who travel to the UK by illegal and dangerous routes, including by small boats across the Channel, may be relocated to Rwanda, where they will have their asylum claims considered. Outside the meeting, Masood, who's from Iran, reveals an email he's had from the Home Office confirming his asylum claim has been referred to the third country process, meaning he too is being considered for Rwanda. If not there, then somewhere. And there's plenty of people on the streets here that we need to you know, look after and put our own you know, country first. Others shared their frustration. I'm pretty sure it's going to be cost a lot of money, so when that could be put into other places in the country. I think the, the government's entire immigration policy is awful. What kind of powder keg are we building here through incompetent leadership in the UK? I'm a mixed race Muslim and I'm pointing out this very obvious truth. The sheer brass neck, frankly, Andrew, of you lecturing me about the truth when you've spent the last week spewing complete fake news bullshit. You told your millions of followers, and it was seen by 15 million people, that it was an illegal migrant who had committed these crimes. Are you prepared to apologize for that lie? Playing a, a, a clip of a video you posted to uh, Instagram, I think it was, on the 29th of July, that you posted to various social media platforms, in which was your response to what had happened. So an undocumented migrant decided to go into a Taylor Swift dance class today and stab six little girls. That's right, somebody arrived in the UK on a boat. Nobody knew who he was. Nobody knows where he's from. The media is, of course, hiding the fact that this is a 17-year-old male. They don't want to highlight how ridiculous it is that we allow military-aged males, combatants, to flood our shores. I don't see any protests in the UK. I don't see anybody complaining. Nobody's outside of the school. Nobody's outside the police station. The soul of the Western man is so broken that when the invaders slaughter your daughters, you do absolutely fucking nothing. Now, now that, that video has been viewed 15.1 million times. X limited uh, the post's visibility because of its rules on hateful conduct. But the bottom line, Andrew, is that almost everything you said in that video was completely untrue. And yet it was uh, apparently seized upon uh, online, spread wide and far, and made people believe what you were saying. So my question for you off the top here is, why did you race to spread such woeful disinformation, given the massive following you had? You began with a video in the immediate aftermath of the Southport stabbings that engaged in conspiracy theories about who did this and about whether the police were telling the truth. You said, and I'm quoting here, some reports suggest he, the man charged, was known to the security services. Which reports? Um, this is the problem, isn't it? One of the reasons the Southport riots were as bad as they were is we weren't told the truth. There were stories online uh, from some very prominent uh, folks with big followings, Andrew Tate, etc., suggesting the man had crossed the English Channel in a boat in October 2023. Um, other suggestions that he was an active Muslim. Um, and much of this 
led to the riots that we saw. But you amplified that because you said some reports suggest... I asked a very simple question. Was this person known or not? Now... To the security services? Absolutely. And that's a perfectly legitimate question, which was raised well, by Yvette Cooper. But, Nigel yes. Farage, you didn't just do that, did you? You said yes. some reports suggest he was known to the security services. Those reports were from a fake news website yep. amplified by Russian state TV and, as you mentioned, Andrew Tate. Which ones were you looking at? I want to know the truth. I wanted to know it then, and I want to know it now. And I get the feeling we're not always being told the whole truth. OK, let's come to that, because you also said that. You wondered whether, and I'm quoting again, the truth about Southport was being withheld from us. Mm. What evidence do you have that the police are lying to people? The evidence was withheld on Southport. Had we been told very quickly, as we could have been, that in fact this fella had been born in the United Kingdom, that his parents were Rwandans, that he didn't come from an Islamist-type background. Mm -hmm. Had we been told he hadn't arrived by boat, I suggest to you that what happened that night in Southport would not have been of the same magnitude. Would you not agree? Investigating the anarchy. There have been nearly 600 arrests now. Hello, what's your name, Chief? The alleged offences include violent disorder and racially aggravated criminal damage. And it's not just those who were there physically. This armchair rioter, Jordan Parler, has become the first person jailed for social media posts. You were encouraging others to attack a hotel which you knew was occupied by refugees and asylum seekers. The overall effect of your post was to incite violence. Parler's initial Facebook post received six likes, but he was then sent to 1,500 friends. He wrote, every man and his dog should smash the F out of the Britannia Hotel. His mum told the court the 28-year-old was caught up and swept away by emotions circulating around the country. The sentence that I pass has been reduced by one third to reflect your guilty plea. The sentence is one of 20 months imprisonment. In the face of this violence, many communities have come together. Local residents have organised clean-up operations and shows of solidarity with those affected. Fundraisers have been launched to support damaged properties and faith leaders have called for calm and unity. So the last 10 days have been very, very intense. They've been terrifying for a lot of people. The Iman addressing the anti-racist rally today has spent the last few days trying to build bridges with some of those who've been demonstrating outside his mosque. Last Friday, he took to social media with a highly unusual message for them. So just to let you know, anybody who attends the protest tomorrow, we're going to be handing out free cold drinks to you. We're going to be handing out burgers and chips. And Adam Kelwick was true to his word after offering food to those who'd come to protect his mosque across the road and did the same to those who'd come to protest. But at times like these, the kindness of strangers is a powerful antidote. And here they have pulled together. We've been doing lots of sweeping, picking up like um, bricks and doing that all bit. And we've been down here for... Um, two and a half hours. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Also okay, for, no problem. Uh, so Liam turned up at the mosque and offered to fix the broken windows. You know, this mosque has, be, has been here all my life. I've, it, I've, it's what I've, we've always known, you know, to, to be here, part of our community. So we just want to show our support. Once again, they have had to pull together. And this community are determined to show that they will not be divided. Newcastle United. Black and white and brown. We will not cower in the face of racism, bigotry, violence, extremism and hate. That the message of hundreds of anti-racism protesters in the city centre this morning, a city which notably has escaped disorder thus far. Obvious question, but why it was brought you on the show? For five reasons, diversity, inclusion, equality, Freedom and justice for everybody. I wanted to come here today. There were these hundreds of people to make that clear. The Nazis and the right wing unwelcome here in Newcastle. We are the people. We won't be silent. Several hundred anti-racist protesters gathered at Liverpool's Pierhead at lunchtime today, 
or just a handful of opponents with a single Union Jack. We'll not tolerate violence. Um, you can take all the politics out of it, but ultimately I don't want my city ransacked by thugs. You can't just let them go out on the streets and think that they've got this, you know, they've got the place to themselves. You've got to demonstrate that, that they're a tiny minority. Thousands of people have taken to the streets of towns and cities across England in counter demonstrations against a wave of riots by anti-immigration protesters. More than 6,000 police officers were mobilised on Wednesday evening from Newcastle to Birmingham, Liverpool to Brighton, Sheffield to London. Police established a cordon separating the large crowd from this, a group of less than 50 gathered with Union and St George flags to protest, they said, against immigration. They're leaving their women and children at home. If they were that frightened for their safety, they'd send their women and children and fight for their country back. How do you know they're To me, loads of men coming across here are looking for war. They're not looking for peace, are they? When people accuse you of being a racist, what do you say? A racist? I'm not a racist. I'm just against what the, what's happening. I'm a concerned grandparent about illegal and threatened in, immigration and the exploitation of our country. People, Thank you. people say, but, but are you a racist, sir? Whoa! That's what people say. People accuse the... Whoa! Yeah. Whoa. No, that's Whoa. not the case, so I want you to answer that. What's no, your answer? No, I'm not. I've got plenty of uh, foreign friends, black friends, Asian friends, Look at all the people here. No. Are we all are we all what we've been branded as right wing football hooligans? But you but do you, but you condemn the violence then? Of course I do. Was Elon Musk's prediction of civil war snuffed out by this demonstration of civil peace? This morning, the boards came off the shops in Walthamstow. They weren't needed, thanks to a community that came out to send a message. Wormstow especially is like a very big, diverse community. Um, when I walk through here, it feels like a majority, uh, majority brown place. Mm. So it's uh, nice that everyone comes together. And I didn't think for a second now that EDL were going to stand a chance against everyone. All we need is peace, work mm. and well-being of our families, not to go around and do whatever. In certain groups, the anger that fueled the riots hasn't gone. In Portsmouth on Wednesday night, a small number of anti-migrant protesters came, not to be violent, they said, but because they wanted their voices heard. We're not here to cause trouble, which is why we're happy to stand here and speak to you. If it kicks off, it kicks off. Watch us kick off. Start listening to the English! This group then decided to block traffic on a trunk road. Save our kids! But riot police were called in, and in these numbers, they were easy enough to control. Police say more protests are planned this weekend and 6,000 trained riot officers remain on standby. The planned midweek night of chaos didn't work, but rioters are impulsive and alcohol fueled hot summer nights can be more potent than plans made on the internet. We can't assume this is over. Thousands of counter protesters took to the streets yesterday. These are people who oppose the recent violence, people who oppose the rioters. And what do these counter-protesters want? They want to keep welcoming refugees into the UK. They want to keep promoting the idea of British multiculturalism. Yesterday, these people, the counter-protesters, were out in full force all over the UK, and they heavily outnumbered the potential rioters. Look at this picture from Brighton. There's a sea of counter-protesters and there's a small area cordoned off by the police. They're in bright yellow vests. The police made that little bubble to protect the anti-immigrant demonstrators. Only four or five of them had shown up. And they couldn't do much. They were surrounded. The sea of counter-protesters raised slogans. They kept chanting, Nazi scum off our streets. In fact, this chant was heard all over the UK yesterday. Far-right protesters may have turned up to places like Walthamstow, seen the number of counter-protesters and simply turned back. It's also possible that with so many events organised, they'd spread themselves too thin. And the police believe, with over 400 arrests, they depleted the numbers of key agitators. And there was another message that may have influenced not just arrests, but also lengthy prison sentences handed down for violence. Police in London made more arrests Thursday morning, the Met Commissioner joining the dawn raids. These are criminal thugs 
any suggestion they're patriots or they've got a cause that they're protesting about is nonsense. They're criminals and, frankly, most of them are going to be charged with violent disorder and most of them are going to be going to prison for a few years. The city had been braced for trouble. So this part of Bristol is where a couple of immigration lawyers are based, whose addresses have been leaked online. And there was a real fear there could be a far-right protest taking place here today. But we've been here the last couple of hours, and there's not a sign of that. Instead, something very different has happened. Smash the bash! Smash the bash! Smash the bash! Thousands of anti-racism protesters, trade unionists, members of the local black and Asian community, students, took over the streets in what was broadly a good-natured evening, but one that sent a message. I feel ashamed for our country right now. It's just we're not representing ourselves in any sense of a manner that's, like, admirable at all. You can see a lot of places are boarded up, so there's been a lot of fear about what could happen, um, and it just felt really important that we were here to, yeah, to protect our community. Show of unity from communities. It was ordinary people who stopped the rioters last night, not the police, not the government, but ordinary people from all walks of life. On the one hand, it's inspirational, people coming out to support their neighbours, to protect British multiculturalism. But it's also worrying. The rioters were ordinary British people as well. Their actions show that there is simmering resentment in the UK, waiting to erupt at a moment's notice. Yesterday's demonstrations may bring some joy to the scared minority communities, but it won't make Britain's division suddenly disappear. Something has to be done to address the root cause of the riots. The anger in British society needs to be addressed, or another riot will only be one social media rumour away. As the UK grapples with this crisis, it is clear that combating misinformation and promoting factual understanding is crucial. The riots serve as a stark reminder of the power of false narratives and the importance of social cohesion in diverse societies. Moving forward, it is essential for all citizens to seek accurate information and resist the pull of divisive rhetoric. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. Ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. Until next time. Explore, learn and stay curious.